Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new landscape photography vlog and we are at one of my favorite places, Death Valley National Park. This video is a little bit different than the ones I've done previously though because in this video we're going to visit a brand new location, one that I've never been to before. So in many ways this is kind of a scouting trip. This is more of a, a day just going to explore and map out different spots on these dunes. These are some sand dunes on the south side of the park that are a little bit more remote, take a pretty long dirt road to get to, and I'm just so excited to check them out and take you guys on this adventure. So let's get out there. that dune out there. Absolutely massive. And then there's kind of this empty gap in the middle and then more dunes on the right side. All right, you guys, so we are at the dunes. And you can see here just how expansive this area is. And since this is my first time here, I'm not entirely sure where to go. I could head in this direction over here and kind of climb up that dune and look at those ones on, out in the distance on the end. But it does look like that's the edge of the dunes. And I think what may be a better option is to head over there. But the thing is, since right now the sun is coming from this angle, everything over here is front lit. So it doesn't look that great. What we're gonna need to do is get on the other side of this bigger dune or on top of the dune and see what we can see. But I think the realistic thing that'll give me the most options right now is heading in that direction towards these bigger dunes because then I could have these dunes over here backlit or side lit from the sun, which could look really nice. So probably three or four options in this direction. Seems like there's probably less to do over there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna head that way. Now I wasn't entirely certain which area of the dunes was going to be best, but it didn't matter. If something catches your eye in the distance, you should just go walk to it. Because the worst case scenario is you might not find what you were looking for, and you just ended up going for a stroll. But the best case scenario is you might find something really unique that took a little bit more work and determination. I massively underestimated these dunes and how steep they are. Wow. I'm either very out of shape or that was a really tall sand dune. Really steep, really sandy. Look at that. It's amazing. I think it's maybe more amazing because I'm out of breath or Maybe I'm just not thinking clearly, but what a spectacular view. Wow. Deep shadows, golden light on the right side of the dunes. It's gonna take me a lot more than a few hours to scout these dunes. So I guess you could say this view really did take my breath away. And here is my first test shot.
So there were a lot of cool elements to this photograph and some things I thought I could work on. I thought that sweeping side light was absolutely beautiful and I love how some of the dune shapes mimic the hills in the background. But I did feel like this composition was a little bit cramped and pretty left heavy. There was also a really nice patch of dunes on the left side that I couldn't fit in this frame. So in order to balance this scene more, I thought it would be best to head to the left. Pulled out the 100 to 400 lens just to try a few angles here. And I'm just using this lens to really pick out little scenes out there in the distance. See the way the light is shifting. You have this really nice warm glow on the right side of the dunes and then a beautiful bluish tint to the shadows. So it's like the perfect color contrast right now. After exploring and playing around for a little while, I found a pretty cool abstract composition. And here it is. I thought this one turned out really nice with all of these organic, simple lines and that beautiful swoosh in the foreground. It was really cool how some of these dune textures were so smooth comparatively to some of the other dunes I've photographed. It almost makes it look like silk or bed sheets. With this one, in order to get everything in focus, I had to do a bit of a focus stack here. And that meant taking multiple images at different focal points. So I did one for the background, mid-ground, and then two images for that foreground ridge. And then I stitched them all together to get this final image. I think I want to head in that direction to see if I can kind of line up some of these patterns more. I think that's what we're going to try. We're going to head back that direction. So during my scout, one of the most valuable tools that I was using was my offline map system. So for myself, I use Google Offline Maps, and basically I'll take the entire area and download it on Wi-Fi the night before so that I can use the map without service. And then while I'm wandering around these dunes, I'm marking different pinpoints of compositions that I see. And then I'm also taking reference pictures on my phone that I can check out later. Another great app for scouting is called PhotoPills. And this is fantastic for checking sun direction and moon direction, and you can even track the Milky Way with it. And then my final application is Gaia GPS. This is another offline map system that I use when I go for longer hikes. After I moved further over, I found a perfect alignment of the dunes. And here's how it turned out. As that sun got lower and lower, the warm light got more and more vivid, and I really love the look it gave to this photograph. So this one is a panorama taken with my telephoto lens, so I'm doing three vertical images stacked horizontally, and then I stitched them together in Photoshop. I felt like bringing that foreground dune in from the left side really helped to balance out this composition. So after shooting this one, I decided to stick around this general area and see what would happen at sunset as that light dropped even further along the horizon. And here's how it turned out. It was cool to see those mountains in the distance fall completely into shadow, really highlighting the shape of the dunes. This is probably the most dramatic light that I saw that evening, and I was really happy to be in a position to capture it. After waiting for the sun to completely fade, I decided to wander around for a little bit to see if I could find a photograph with some reflected light. It is absolutely incredible. Beautiful soft light right now. And it's right after sunset. So the sun setting acts like this giant soft box and you get all this warm glow and a bit softer light than when the sun is in the sky, but sunset was still really nice. As far as settings go, I'm not really too worried about the settings. I think I'm just gonna bump my ISO down to 100. Let's do F11. And I'm going into long exposure territory, so doing about a four second exposure, which means since I'm on the telephoto lens, probably a good idea to set the timer. Let's get this shot real quick. So 
So this was an absolutely fantastic scouting day, and I think one of the reasons why was because I tried not to put too much pressure on myself to get a photograph. I gave myself a ton of extra time to explore, play around, and just go out there and have fun. And I know for me, when I do put too much pressure on myself to get a photograph, oftentimes I get too flustered, overwhelmed, and I don't come away with anything. It's those moments of spontaneous exploration where I end up coming away with some of the work that I'm the most proud of. The next week, I used those Google offline points, and Marco and I took our workshop group here. We had an amazing outing, and I even found a wide-angle composition that I hadn't seen the previous shoot. And here's how that turned out. So luckily one thing we did have on our group shoot was some clouds, and it really helped to add a bit of texture above the dunes, which is definitely another reason why you should revisit locations. Because seeing the location with different lighting and different conditions can oftentimes influence how you see different compositions. This one was shot with my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Here's a shot of some other dunes with reflected light that we captured with our group. Again, this is taken with the 100 to 400 lens, and I just love the repetition of shape and pattern here. Our workshop group went to a bunch of beautiful locations around Death Valley National Park, and I thought it would be fun to show you some of my favorites. Here's an abstract composition of the beautiful salt patterns on the valley floor, and this is another spot that I had scouted a week prior. The first time I visited the light was quite harsh, but I took notice of this composition and made sure to revisit with some nice early morning light. So to summarize, give yourself a ton of extra time to explore. There's nothing worse than getting out there, realizing you didn't give yourself enough time to properly scout. If you see something that intrigues you, go walk to it, because that's really going to be the ultimate test of if a composition is going to look interesting or not. Make sure to use proper tools like an offline map system and take reference pictures on your phone. This is going to be especially helpful when you revisit that location, and if you want to hike back out somewhere during sunrise, you're going to want to definitely know where you're going and where your compositions are. When you're out there, keep wandering and fine-tuning your compositions. Don't just settle for the first thing that you find. And then the final thing is to just go have fun. Try not to take it too seriously and enjoy yourself. Because at the end of the day, that's probably why most of us do this in the first place. With that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more because I'm going to have more from Death Valley National Park and from the Southwest. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.